I'm gonna do my review. I'm gonna do my thoughts and review on Last of Us Part Two. So it's because I'm sick of. I, I want my. I want my opinion out there, and um, I'm tired of everybody else's opinions. So it's this rile up about Last of Us Part Two because it's the only game out. Uh, we got a lot of fake, but we got a lot of fake ass people on here jumping on the bandwagon of Last of Us hate. I mean, their whole channels are made of of comic books and movies, and I don't see any game reviews in none of their description. But now they jump on the bandwagon of Last of Us. They're putting Last of Us videos. I see somebody who had almost 50 videos of Last of Us Part Two. Okay, you don't like the game? Move the fuck on. But I forgot, there's nothing going on in the, in, in the COVID-19 era right now. So they have to keep talking about a game that people like because they don't want to they don't want to admit that this this game has good parts to it. And I'm going to break it down from there. But it's funny to me that the most popular games that I see on, on here are online games. These are people who don't play games on a consistent basis. They only play online like uh, Eight Packs Legend, Overwatch, Minecraft, Sea of Thieves, GTA Online, PUBG, and Fortnite. These are people who don't play video games like that. Jumping in the jumping in comment section, this is the best, this is the worst video game I ever played. Online games don't have endings like that. And online games are pretty much the same thing over and over and over again. They just give them updates. Wait a minute. You the same people who not going to call Rockstar to task who have been giving players the same game for eight years, but you're going to call Last of Us Part 2 to task. Wow. That's some bullshit. There's a lot of gripe shit that happened in the gaming industry for the past 10 years, but you motherfuckers are not going to say anything because these games you like. See, there's games that I know that everybody else like that I never liked right I stopped playing Assassin's Creed at the Black Flag I stopped playing Call of Duty after Black Ops 2 I stood my ground on things that I didn't like but I didn't speak on it you know why because I understand everybody liking but when you call The Last of Us an SJW game and you don't think about that Ellie in general was a lesbian from the start of the game. You really thought that Ellie was going to like men after the situation she had with David? I mean, y'all said that y'all understand The Last of Us and blah, 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 and The Last of Us this and The Last of Us that. But I didn't see y'all make concept art of Joel on your channels. I didn't see y'all make concept art of Joel and Ellie. Where's your shirt at for Last of Us? Where's your wallpapers at for Last of Us? If y'all like this so much, where's y'all dedication to this series? I like The Last of Us. And I, I consider it one of the best games I played of the last generation. But I wouldn't be sitting there getting mad over a character dying when I know that Joe was supposed to die in the first place. It's the way he died. It's after he died, there wasn't any kind of dialogue to respect him after he was dead. There was a lot of things that I didn't like about this game, and I'm going to break it down. All right? So these are the levels that are on Last of Us Part 1 that people don't understand and don't really like. They don't remember because a lot of people, oh, yeah, I played The Last of Us Part 1. But The Last of Us did these levels 10 times better than the Part 2. Let me let me tell you. The outskirts, right? When Joe goes and take out all of the infected in that area. So Joel, I mean, so Ellie and Tess can move through the building. You have that in the beginning of the game. Where y'all clear and infected. And overall, this, this whole thing, the infected, 
it's like easy mode on here because you already used to it but it 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 corners it, it, it correlates to how good ellie and her group is with the infected that they won't that they can actually take them out quietly without uh alerting the others right it does a better job than the outskirts Bill's Town, when you're by yourself in Bill's Town, dodging all the bombs and stuff like that, right? Um, there's a level like that in this game that's similar to this game. That you have to duck and dodge the bombs. And there's even, there's even parts of sections where you have to navigate yourself and save your ammo and save all of your weapons in the first playthrough where you have to sneak around and kill the infected and then take care of the bloater in a smart way just like bill's town so they does that right they does that well pittsburgh i think that's where uh, let me see. Let me see. Pittsburgh is the Henry and Sam's art, where it was action oriented, and it was uh, it was filled with some action packed moments, and it was filled with, you know, you're going after, you was sneaking around and doing all this in the in there, and the best level in that in that game in that section in the Pittsburgh section was when you was protecting Henry, and you had to literally, literally be quiet in that section because you was protecting somebody else's you was protecting somebody else's loved one and you didn't want to make you didn't want to make a sound if you would have made a sound you would have had to take out every single clicker in that environment you had to be smart that section has that has other sections in there that's in the last of us part two that does a better job than Pixburg section Tommy's damn. There's gameplay in there that gives you action pack sections that just like Tommy's damn. The university going in there where you're sneaking around and by that time of the game you're overpowered because you got, you know, all these weapons and stuff. It, it, it does it better in there. The lakeside, the bus depot, the Firefly Lab. This all these levels in the first game is done better in part two, but you don't want to give credit to that. You're playing as Ellie, but you're doing a lot of stuff that you did in the first game, but you did it ten, you're doing it ten times better. The pros of this of this game that I'm gonna speak of, right? Nice levels with the infected. The infected are a lot aggressive. Not only that, they got infected where you got sections where it's hordes coming after you. Where you're not some overpowered person, you have to actually run from them. You can't fight, you can't fight a horde. You have to run. They have a lot of sections of them that in The Last of Us Part Two was kind of unbelievable, especially the one in Bill's Town where you're hanging upside down. You got an unlimited ammo, but y'all, y'all not gonna talk about that. Unlimited ammo. Uh, come on now. There's sections in, in in the game that you have to survive, and then you turn around and have to fight live people. Then there's the best moments is that you can use the affected, and you can use the affected. To go against the live people, take their take the ammo from them, use it to the remaining of the uh, the um, live people, and clear the level and sweep that whole area of of tools you need to go on the next one. Ellie's skill set. Ellie is a more proficient than she was when she was 14. Even one when she was with when she before she saved Joel, after she saved Joel, she's a 
a hardened survivor that has all these different techniques she has. She knows how what it's like to clear a whole room of infected. So she goes in and stabs them without making any noise. She she's know how to take take down a bloater. She knows how to take down all this other stuff. She is proficient with weapons now because Joe taught her. She knows how to swim. Respect the developers when they actually gave Ellie all these skills and actually in the end game when she said to Joel that she's a better shot and she can do routes by herself without anybody. Even in a dialogue where you have her saying that she can do it alone. She needed help. But in levels where she was alone, she was okay. This shows Ellie growth and it shows Ellie's skill set. Ellie's friendship. Even though this reflects from the first one, Ellie had Riley that she loved. Now she has Dana. Ellie had Sam that she has a friend. Now she has Jesse, who's a lot stronger than Sam. She, life in the community, in the post apocalyptic, you hear in the background that they're trading with other settlements, kind of like. The Alexandria of The Walking Dead. You see a live breathing section that in a post-apocalyptic that shows that they did try to salvage society. Right? Replayability. The first playthrough is you playing this game as hard as you can because you have to survive straps. You have to watch out for what you create. In the second one, you get to play it how you want to. You can play the first one how you want to. I mean, you can play the first time, like the first time where you shoot three bullets and say, I got three bullets in the chamber. You can restart this game. You can restart the, 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 you can restart all of the encounters. You can even restart the, the encounters based off how many people you killed in a room. Give them credit for that. They can replay it. The replayability of this game is great. You can play it. The, 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 the limits of the replayability of this game is about three times. The first time you play it, the first time you're trying to stack up your, your skills. The second time you're playing how you want to play it a little bit. And the third time you're playing it how you generally, uh, you generally want to, um, You generally want to, um, so somebody was talking in the background. You generally just want to play it the way you want to play it the set, the, 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 the third time, because by that time you already powered up Ellie and you already powered up, um, Abby the way you want her to power up and you play it how you want, how you think they're going to be played. Also, you have known, you know all the nooks, nooks and cranny by the second and the third playthrough. So you're more comfortable with everything in the environment and you play it how you want to play it the third time. The world building with the Seraphites and, and the, the, the wolves. This, this tells you a story about two factions that in The Last of Us Part 1 didn't tell you about the factions. They didn't tell you about the hunters like that. They didn't tell you about the fireflies like that. But you want to say how bad written this the Last of Us Part Two was, but the Last of Us Part One was badly written too because I think the Last of Us in general was a one-off. They didn't. I don't think they they was planning on making it too, because if you go back, all you heard was the fireflies. All you heard was that they was weak. They lost to the military, but the wolves won against the military. The Seraphites was beating the wolves with guerrilla tactics, and. I want to know about these guys, and you get to you get to know about them on Abby's playthrough, and you get to endure them on Ellie's playthrough. Tommy one man one man army. Tommy in this game stepped up a whole lot. Tommy is Joel's brother. Everybody thought that Tommy was weak. 
and you know Tommy wasn't as hard as Joel. This dude took out one of Joel's killers, beat him to death, and killed both of them, and and, and took out probably like a, a building full of people. You seen this carnage afterwards. Then uh, Abby and Carlos, I mean Abby and Manny, was going against uh, Tommy, and Manny got killed. The guy that spit on Joel. He was a one-man army in this in this game. I wish we can we can we can play it as him instead of Abby, but you can change settings in this game. Better than a lot of games. The accessibility for the blind and the hearing impaired. That helped me not be able to ha ha read long list of stuff. It was the, it was, it gave me the ability to just let the let let the game read itself instead of me just reading a long list of stuff. AI enemies was nice in here. They flanked. If I I stopped using list, I didn't I didn't actually I didn't able listen mode. I had to look around corners. I had to respect the, the the patterns that these people was making. I had to throw bottles away uh, off. It made me feel like I was in Metal Gear Solid, cause I, I I do love Metal Gear Solid. So nice AIs. Not only that, they did a nice nice uh, open world. It's a uh, it played better than um, Metro in some parts. And this game focused on the single player, not online. Because a lot of you pieces of crap who like online games and in online sections of the game don't understand that sometimes that pulls the development from that pulls the development from the single player section and put it into the multiplayer you people keep asking for multiplayer 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 and don't understand that this was the death of the gaming gaming overall because they was catering to everybody who liked multiplayer. This is why GTA didn't have an expansion in the first place. And they keep giving us the same crap. And now they're trying to give us the crap in in uh, in the next generation on PS5. It's your fault that this happened. But I'm happy that they didn't bow down to y'all and gave y'all a multiplayer. Because this, I love this whole, I love the single player. I loved it. Because I felt like it was made for people who like single player. Now, let's go to the cons. Playing as Abby. Playing as Abby felt like playing with Chris Redfield on Resident Evil 6. It, it felt like she was too clumsy. It wasn't believable that I was playing with a person in the post-apocalyptic, a post-apocalyptic, uh, uh, got a movie now. Uh, sorry for slurring the words, but you know, I'm outside, like do my videos outside, but, um, a post-apocalyptic world with big ass muscles and you're hiding on the cars and You're hiding under cars and doing all this other crazy stuff. But um, it was unbelievable. And it exposed, it exposed Abby as just a brat. I mean, she had the protection of the fireflies when she was a kid. And then she has the protection of all these friends. And the WLF, especially a faction like the WLF and the things they did, if you actually read the in-game notes, the WLF was worse than the military. And she had a whole group of people that uh, protected her because if she would have done wrong and it would have been a war between Tommy's, uh, Tommy Solomon and their Solomon, then Tommy Solomon would have been wiped out because... The W, uh, W, uh, L, F, they, oh, they, their, their best, their best, oh, come on now, uh, the best 
their best um their advantage in combat situation is using numbers they're bad at uh they're bad at uh small groups they're real bad in small groups they rely too heavy on uh assault and this is the reason why they get wiped out a lot by the uh the servants. So when you know you got playing as Abby, it's like I can't believe that I'm 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 sneaking through stuff with her. She's too built and big for me to believe that she can do the things that Ellie can do and sneak through grass. She's just too big. And it's like it's more believable that she's more action oriented, and if she does sneak around, it's not under stuff they should have did a better job at putting it better for her in the, in, the, in a level because ain't no way somebody with big arms and her frame can fit through the spots that she fit through so playing as abby in that instance was like okay uh i don't believe none of this crap also as i said it's more her side is more action oriented i I just don't get playing with her and trying to get her point of view because it made me not like her in the first place and it made me think about like wait um uh you it made me think like Abby how you didn't think of that Ellie probably had somebody that she cared for that cared for her you heard the Joel you didn't even ask Joel the question on why he killed your father and that was their that was their fault for the not putting the dialogue in the game like they supposed that why didn't she interrogate him and say why did you kill my father why did you wipe out there why did you do it you just kill him just to kill him no I did it to save Ellie um playing as her 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 in general as a character is flawed like it's like she's just a big baby who she's kind of a trust fund kid in a post-apocalyptic world who was like she jumped from the fireflies to the wlf and all she all she did was jump from more comfortable places to comfortable places how can i how can i actually care about somebody who didn't have to who, who only lost one person in her life but she never had to endure the hardships that ellie had to deal with she lost her father ellie lost her friend ellie lost a whole bunch of people ellie was like ellie had to go all across the the world and actually put her, her life on the line and actually know that Ellie was probably Ellie in general had a harder life than Abby because Ellie has this on her head that she is this she's the she's she's the mankind she's mankind's only hope of turning this around and she feel that she felt that that but Abby is somebody who's a hurt person who decided that she wanted to get revenge because somebody hurt her and then and then turns around and it's be like oh I'm a good woman now because I killed somebody and it's affected me so I want to try to save more people because I now I figured out that our group is bad huh you just found that out that your group was bad and you wanted to change the table. It, it was it was it was bad development on every part of 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 Ellie. I mean of of Abby. It was just it, it the, the her character perspective was only fun for the Seraphs and in the WLF and how they operate. But other than that, playing with her felt like I was playing with Chris Redfield in the action game, and playing with her and trying to understand her. Only small parts of her 
that you actually enjoy and like. The rest of it was was crap. The ending. There wasn't enough dialogue in the game that uh that should have been in this game. Like when when Abby confronted Ellie when she shot Jesse and when she shot Tommy, Ellie should have told her that, you know, it should have been this right here where she should have said, Abby should have, this dialogue should have, it should have went like this. Because a lot of people was, you know, getting on my nerves and I'm about to, you know. But um, it should have been like this. You killed all my friends, but you killed my father. You know, it should have been like that where Ellie said, you killed my father. Why the, why would the hell would I, I, I not kill your friends? You killed my father. And then she was like, I didn't know Joel was your father. Yes, you killed my father in front of me, the way in this way, but he killed my father. Well, and it, it could have been, they could have been going on a little bit right there, a little bit, understanding each other in that dialogue. Like, you killed Joel and you killed him because he killed your father, but you, your father was going to kill me. So Joel did what he had to do. I don't think it was right. And I told him off for it. I told him off for, for it. But you killed him. Without asking him why he did it. And you didn't give him a second chance to make it up to you. And this is why I killed your friends. You killed your friends. I didn't kill your friends. I only killed your friends because you put them a part of this. Now, you want to go against me and you want to kill me? Then let's go. But in turns, if you want to kill me, for killing your friends, then let's go. We're in this right now. But leave Tommy alone because you killed his brother. I don't want you to, I don't want you to shoot my uncle like you shot my father. If we had a dialogue like that, the a knowledge that she considered Tommy her uncle and she considered Joe, she considered Joe her father, then that the whole back and forth of the ending would have been better, right? Where she says she's expressed herself how she loved Joel and she don't know what she's gonna do. And the only thing she can do is become, is let her, let her sadness out with anger. And if she dies and have her a heartfelt moment of the dialogue that she had with Joel in the first game. She says, she's gonna say to Abby, if I die, then at least I will be with Joel. 